In 33 states in the country, uh, if you are the governor, one of your responsibilities as governor, at least theoretically, is to kill people who are in prison, to oversee the process of taking people for whom the state has been responsible for housing and feeding and their medical care and their eyeglasses and their clothes and their mail and their reading material and their toilet paper and everything, taking those people out of the prison cells in which they have been housed by the state and quietly, deliberately killing them, usually in front of an invited audience. In 33 states, that is part of the governor's job description to oversee that process. But something interesting has been happening, somewhat below the political radar about the politics of this issue. Yes, these 33 states have the death penalty, but Illinois, New Jersey, New Mexico, and New York, these states used to have it as well. And they have decided, just in the past five years, to get rid of the death penalty, to get rid of the state process of killing people in prison. They have all abolished the death penalty in the past few years. As well, five months ago, the governor of Oregon didn't go so far as to repeal the death penalty in his state, but he said that as governor, he would no longer enforce it. Uh, reflecting on the two executions he had overseen in a previous term as Oregon governor, John Kitzhaber said, quote, they were the most agonizing and difficult decisions I have made as governor, and I have revisited and questioned them over and over again. I do not believe that those executions made us safer, and certainly they did not make us nobler as a society. And I simply cannot participate once again in something I believe to be morally wrong. And so he will not oversee executions in Oregon. And so in a world in which a country cannot join the European Union if it has the death penalty, in a world where the United States stands almost alone among major Western democracies in still claiming the right to legally kill prisoners, in a world where still a Republican debate audience lustily cheered for a Texas governor's record of overseeing more than 200 executions. Still, in this world, American states are quietly and steadily ending the death penalty. Illinois, New Jersey, New Mexico, and New York have gotten rid of it. Oregon has stopped it. California will put the, likely put the issue of repealing the death penalty before California voters in November in a referendum. The Capital Punishment Project at the ACLU also tells us that there are strong left-right coalitions in favor of repealing the death penalty in Montana, in Kentucky, and in Kansas. But tonight, one more state is poised to take itself off the map of American states where the government does executions. The House of Representatives is voting by a roll call. Members to the chamber, the House taking a roll call vote. Members to the chamber, please. Clerk, please announce a tally. Senate Bill 280 is amended by Senate A and Senate I. In concurrence with the Senate, total number voting 148, necessary for passage 75, yay 86, nay 62, absent not voting 3. Bill is amended as passed. Last night at 10.57 p.m., after almost 10 hours of debate, the Connecticut House of Representatives decided to abolish the death penalty. The bill now goes to the governor of the state of Connecticut for his decision. Joining us now for the interview is Governor Dan Malloy of the great state of Connecticut. Uh, governor Malloy, thank you very much for your time tonight, sir. It's nice to have you here. It's great to be with you, Rachel. Are you going to sign the repeal of the death penalty in your state? Oh, oh yeah. I, I've uh, talked about it for, for years. Um, uh, during the campaign in which uh, I, I was elected a governor, I made it clear that, that I would sign a, a, a repeal uh, a statute if it got before me. It almost cost me the election, quite frankly, uh, but it was what I believed. Um, I, I'm, I'm a governor who's actually tried and prosecuted uh, three, uh, four murder cases and actually defended one. Um, and during that period of time, I uh, switched from being pro uh, death penalty to being against it. I, I, I don't believe as a society we should be engaged in that activity. I, I uh, almost no other industrial, uh, industrialized nation in the world is, is doing it. It's China. It's a Iran, it's Yemen, it's us, and a few others. When you mentioned that this, this almost cost you the governorship because you were clear about your intentions on this when you ran. Well, ads, yeah, actually, ad, my, my opponent actually ran ads against me uh, on this subject. But listen, if you believe something, you believe it. And, and, and by the way, this is not about me. This is about some wonderful leadership in the Senate, wonderful leadership in the House uh, that got together um, and passed this bill again. It's the second time that it's passed. It was uh, vetoed by my predecessor. Um, and um, I'm proud to be in a position to 
sign this. Now, I also have to say that, that I understand uh, the, the victims' families are, are divided on this issue. Some of them uh, in our own state wanted this uh, repeal to be passed, and some of them were very uh, ardent in arguing that this was the only way to, to, to uh, uh, bring closure. I, I understand both sides' arguments, but, but as a society, this is not something we should be doing. And it, and it is applied in our nation even this day, this year, in an arbitrary and capricious fashion. If you examine the statistics and understand that uh, 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 people who kill, uh, 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 people of color who kill uh, white people are much more likely to, to uh, uh, receive the death penalty than, than other groups, you start to understand how capricious uh, uh, this is in some cases in its application. In terms of that, that issue of how it is applied, do you think that is what is changing people's minds on this the most? I mean, Connecticut has a, has a history of executions going back to the 1700s, and this has been an issue that has been hotly debated year after year after year after year. What do you think it is that uh, changed enough people's minds on this issue over time that this repeal has finally come to pass? Well, well, let us remember the first person put to death in Connecticut was put to death because uh, that person was accused of being a witch. Um, um, and and uh, we've made other mistakes in, in Connecticut, I believe. Uh, but most importantly, we're violating the, uh, the Supreme Court's decision uh, that originally outlawed the death penalty because we were doing it in an arbitrary and capricious fashion. If you were prosecuted in one particular city in our state, you were seven times more likely to receive the death penalty than if you had committed a crime and been tried in another uh, city in our state. Uh, so we weren't meeting a constitutional standard, nor do we have a workable death penalty a statute in our own state. Since 1961, the only person to be put to death actually volunteered for it by withdrawing their appeals. Uh, every other person currently on the death penalty, uh, on, the, on, on death row, um, uh, uh, is not likely to have put, been put to death anyway, but we had uh, this practice uh, in place where they, they could be. We have several people on death row who've been on longer than 20 years. I, I think what we're doing is joining the rest of the industrialized world, joining the 16 other states. By the way, when you talk about the states, understand that Wisconsin Wisconsin out, outlawed the death penalty uh, in 1853, and Maine did it in 1876. This is not a new movement. It was a slow one to develop. It's picking up steam. I believe there, there's a day coming when our nation will join the rest of the industrialized world uh, in doing away with this. In terms of the men in Connecticut who are on death row right now, I know that the part of getting this passed was an agreement that it would not apply retroactively. Uh, those men, those 11 men on death row in Connecticut, will still technically be facing execution. It just This just means that there'll be no new death sentences handed down in the state. If any of those cases did um, come to the end in terms of appeals while you were still governor, can you imagine yourself carrying out the executions for the men who were not grandfathered in in this legal change? No, I couldn't. Uh, imagine myself doing that. But actually, I'm a governor in a state that doesn't uh, vest that power in the governor. So I, I would never have had to make that decision uh, uh, as governor. Uh, but I understand uh, 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 other governors who have been tormented by the decisions they've been made, uh, that they've made, and, and how difficult it must be. Uh, that's simply not the law here. But I have to tell you, I'm proud to be the governor who will sign this legislation, proud to serve uh, with the men and the women of the Senate and the House that have passed this legislation, and proud that, that that we're joining 16 other states uh, that have themselves joined the rest of the industrialized world in moving beyond uh, this particular penalty. Now, listen, we also made another compromise, or actually an improvement, I think, on the bill. And we've, we've said for particularly heinous crimes, people will be treated differently as if they are on death row with, with very limited um, uh, rights and, and privileges. Uh, we understand that there should be uh, different, different forms of punishment for, for, for individuals, but death is not one of those. Governor Dan Malloy of Connecticut, thank you for being with us on the show tonight, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back.